Okay, you're ready. All right, good evening, everyone. Nice to see everyone. Uh, we'll begin by calling to order the April 23rd, 2024 meeting of the Albemarle County Planning Commission. And I would like to establish a quorum. Do you mind calling the roll, please? Yes. Mr. Moore. Present. Mr. Murray. Here. Mr. Missile. Here. <laughs> Mr. Carizana. Here. Mr. Bivens. Here. And Mr. Um, Claiborne is absent and Ms. Firehawk is not here yet. Great, thank you. Um, I'd just like to read one section here at the beginning, the opportunities for the public to access and participate in the hybrid meetings uh, are posted on the Albemarle County website, on the Planning Commission homepage and on the Albemarle County calendar. Participation will include the opportunity to comment on those matters for which comments from the public will be received. And with that, I will move on to uh, matters, any public comment on matters not listed on the agenda. No. Nobody has signed up. Anybody in the audience? No, nobody online? Mm -hmm. All right. And there's people online, but they don't have their hands raised. Okay, thank you. I will move on to the consent agenda and ask if there's a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Second? Second. Any discussion? <clears throat> Could I have the roll, please? Okay. Uh, Mr. Moore? Aye. Mr. Murray? Aye. Mr. Missile? Aye. Mr. Carizana? Aye. Mr. Bivens? Aye. And Ms. Firehawk? Present. So, uh, oh, we're, t we're doing the minutes. Oh. Aye. <laughs> and present. Thank you. Pause for emphasis. Nice. Welcome. All right. Uh, well, with that, I will move on to the public hearings, beginning with SP 2023-18 Kappa Sigma International Headquarters. And I'll ask for the staff report. Great. Thank you, everyone. Um, good evening. My name is Sid Schroff, and I'm a senior planner with the planning division of Albemarle County's Community Development Department. Tonight, I'll be giving staff's presentation for special use permit SP 2023-18 Kappa Sigma International Headquarters. This is a special use permit request to amend an existing special use permit to relocate and enlarge a previously approved building. The subject property is approximately 6.14 acres and located south of the city of Charlottesville at 1610 Scottsville Road. It is zoned R1 residential and has been home to the Kappa Sigma International Headquarters since 2004. The comprehensive plan designates it as urban density residential. As I mentioned in the last slide, the site has been home to the Kappa Sigma International Headquarters for the last 20 years. The existing building on the site is approximately 22,977 square feet and is three stories. It is used for administration, meetings, a museum, and library space. The first special use permit to construct the existing building was approved in 2004. Another special use permit was approved in 2006 to expand the existing building and construct another building on the site. Currently, there's a major site plan amendment under review to construct the approved building expansion. The surrounding properties are zoned residential or rural. The property of the north is also owned by Scottsville Road Holdings LLC, and it is zoned R1 residential. It contains a pavilion and overflow parking for the Kappa Sigma International Headquarters. Additionally, to the north is the Galaxy Farm subdivision, and it is zoned planned residential development. To the west and southwest is the Avenity Estates um, subdivision, which is also zoned planned residential development. Lastly, to the south and southeast is Somerset Farm, which is zoned rural areas. The applicant is proposing to relocate and enlarge an improved building, which is shown with the highlighted label on the right. The applicant is proposing to move the building from the parking lot to be adjacent to the property line with the Vinity Estates townhomes. The proposed building is a one-story, approximately 8,790 square foot uh, building with a maximum height of 27.5 feet to the center peak of the roof line. It would be used to display archives and memorabilia associated with the Kappa Sigma. Additionally, the new building space may be used for meetings and support facilities such as research, classroom space, storage, and guest suites. The previously approved building from SP 2006-21 was approved to be roughly 1,266 square feet with the same uses. Additionally, the applicant is proposing a new delivery area slash access way to the rear of the proposed building, as well as a new landscape area between the existing building and the proposed building. Here is a proposed cross-section profile view if this were to be approved. 
To the left are the Avenity Estates townhomes. In between the townhomes, there is an existing six-foot privacy fence and a roughly 12-foot open space parcel that is owned by the Avenity Estates HOA, which contains existing vegetation. On the Kappa Sigma property, there is a 20-foot use buffer that consists of existing vegetation, and the building is set back 50 feet, which meets the county setback requirement. The finished floor elevation of the proposed building will be between 8 feet to 27 feet below the finished floor elevation of the townhomes in Divinity Estates. The dashed gray line over the proposed building corresponds to the cupola heights in the image below. These are proposed renderings of what the building could look like. If this were to be approved, it would be subject to the Architectural Review Board review to ensure compliance with the entrance corridor guidelines. And here's a zoomed in picture of the previous slide. The red dashed line is from the average height of eyesight for someone who's 5'7". Above the proposed building is the dashed gray line, which corresponds to the max height of 27.5 feet of the cupola on the building. The special use permit application was re reviewed under the factors for consideration as outlined in the zoning ordinance. Staff believes that the proposed special use permits will not be detrimental to adjacent parcels, will not change the character of the nearby area, will continue to be in harmony with the R1 residential zoning district, and is consistent with the comprehensive plan. There are nine conditions drafted for the special use permit. I'm not going to get into all of them, but they are carryover from the previously approved SP, uh, special use permit, and condition one was modernized with new language. Staff added condition 1C, 1D, and 1E to, to address the new building. So in sum, there are two factors that are favorable. The first is it's consistent with the review criteria for special use permits contained in the zoning ordinance. And the second is the use is consistent with the Southern and Western neighborhoods master plan. There is no factor unfavorable. Staff recommends approval with the conditions as recommended in the staff report and update to the concept plan to construct pedestrian improvements along Route 20. And I'm happy to answer any questions from the commission. Thank you. Great, thank you. Any questions from the commission? Start down here. Yeah. Uh, not particularly about the building per se. We did get a couple of public emails about sound and noise potential. And I was just wondering if uh, somebody from county staff could explain um, our county's uh, noise regulations in this particular zoning type, uh, how it's measured, what to do if a neighbor feels like it's too loud. Would someone from uh, BART, are you able to answer any zoning questions regarding noise or Rebecca? Good evening, Mark Swoboda, uh, Deputy Director, Community Development, Zoning Administrator. What may I help you with? Uh, I was just asking about the noise. There were some emails about this facility and Kappa Sigma parties that have been loud in the past. And just curious what the, the county's uh, rule is about uh, noise uh, when it hits the neighbor's property and uh, what someone can do if they feel like it's too noisy. So we have two types of noise. One is nuisance noise. One is land use noise. Uh, land use noise has a decibel rating uh, and a time um, that's allowed. Uh, nuisance noise, the, that is frequently, uh, say, a party that goes on. And so that is something that's an audible thing that is determined by the police department. So you would call uh, Elmore County Police Department for that type of noise. Mm -hmm. um, events or things. Um, depending on what they are, would be subject to, uh, what's the zoning of this property, Said This is R1 residential. Okay. So I believe it's 60, 60 decibels is what our ordinance says. But if it's a if it's a land use noise, the zoning folks would investigate it and enforce that noise regulation. If it was a nuisance noise through the county code, then Albemarle County Police Department would investigate that and, and proceed accordingly. So there's a, a well-established process in case things get noisy. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Art. Any other questions? No. Commissioner Murray? No. Commissioner Curzon? No, no questions at this time. Commissioner Barra? Yeah, I have one question. Um, so in order for the applicant to get the building below the sight lines of the people at Divinity, they're being a big cut into the slope. 
that's not a steep slope at all. It's not, I didn't, I didn't get out my ruler and measure rise over run. So I'm just asking. Yeah, that particular area is not a steep slope. There are steep slopes managed and preserved on the site, but that's in a different location than where the proposed building would be. Okay, so you know rough, and the applicant could also answer this, but roughly how much, how how deep a cut are they making into that hillside then? I believe it's uh, eight to 27 feet, but the applicant could probably go into more detail. Okay, thanks. And Commissioner Bevins. Thank you. Um, it's mentioned in the in the process that there's going to be a, Group guest rooms, and so do you, does the county have a specific process for guest rooms in these kind of structures? It's not going to be an Airbnb, I assume, but is there a different set of uh, or are there additional um, processes processes that have to be followed in order for them to have both yeah. a hotel, basically a hotel? Thank you. I'm personally not aware of any regulations. The previous SP approved for eight guest bedrooms. Oh, so this is this has been approved already for eight guest bedrooms. And this is within the eight? Yes, this is within. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Great. Any other questions? All right. Okay, with that, I'll open the public hearing and ask for the applicant's report. As a reminder, you have 10 minutes. And when the light turns yellow, you'll have one minute left. Please state your name and... General location for the record. My name is Amy George. Hello to all of you. I'm with Radabush and Gale. I am the consultant that is uh, representing the Kappa Sigma fraternity. Thank you. I want to thank Sid for uh, doing a good job of uh, describing this project. Um, this project has an existing building on the site. Um, what they I guess the center portion and a wing. We are working on a site plan, site plan amendment for the wing on the west, the uh, northern side of the property. Um, as Sid mentioned, it's like this, the uh, ex there was a proposed building site next to the uh, middle of the property, directly adjacent to the parking lot there that we are wanting to move and rotate up along so it creates more of a, a lawn space and more of the Jeffersonian style between the two buildings. Um, so, and it will, I know Mr. Bivens asked about uh, the guest rooms and things um, that it, we continue to use that as part of like the original SP and carry those uses forward. But so far the main uses of the building are gonna be for archival memorabilia uh, classroom spaces and possible meeting spaces and coordination if with with the main building. We uh, we worked really hard with the architect to get a good rendering of the building and to work. I guess like to take into consideration the neighbors' feelings of like not wanting to block their view of Carter Mountain. Um, as Sid said, the proposed building will be eight to, to 27 feet below the Avenity properties. That is not the amount of cut on our property. It's probably like six feet is like the maximum okay. cut on our property. And we'll, we'll either, uh, it'll be graded back up to the existing vegetation that is there or, the first and time. with a retaining wall if needed. We will have, um, I guess, a loading area behind the building to add for uh, caterer access and connection to the, uh, to the building itself. The building elevation is constrained by the elevation of the parking lot itself. We cannot set the building up too high away from the parking lot due to like accessibility issues. So the elevation that is shown on the plan is the relative elevation that, that it should be. Does anybody have any questions? Great, that's okay. your presentation. <laughs> All right, yes. thank you. Uh, I'll open it up for questions. Commissioner Bivens, or sorry, Commissioner Firehawk. I'm, sorry, I'm just still wrestling with this picture. Because you, if you look at, I mean, if you look at the picture and, and also the scale, it looks like 
that diagonal land that's line that's going up to the bottom where the trees are, it almost looks like it's going to the top of the first story. So how could that be six feet? That would mean then from the distance I from the, the top of the line to it, the roof the, line is the average, an average cut of six feet. Okay. So that's because this is just it's like the cross section is just a slice across the middle of the site from the middle of so the that would be the building. deeper slice cross section that we're looking at then. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I know how to use a scale ruler, so <laughs> I can see that doesn't make sense. All right. That was it. Mm -hmm. For now, can I can I just follow up on that? Because my question is along the same same lines. If you, please, if you don't mind, and so I'm I'm trying to reconcile that section cut with the with your site plan because there's obviously a retaining wall behind the building, right? Uh, it's a three to one slope. At that point, like I said, it's like there may Not be a retaining wall, slope. and there may not be. We haven't. It's like the rough grading indicated at that point. I can do a three to one tie back slope. Into existing grade in front of the existing trees. But you can't achieve that section cut without a retaining wall. At certain sections, yes. <laughs> okay, I'm just I'm not seeing a retaining wall on your on your site plan. Um, perhaps maybe by where the uh, where the drive comes in. Yeah, there will be a but, there will be a slight retaining wall where but the drive. Where is. your section cut is, if your section cut is through the center of the as you're showing. It's at the center of the building. It's not at the center of. It's not at the loading area. Correct. It's at the center of the building. Yes, that's what you're showing in. in the, yes. And clearly, you have almost a vertical wall behind the building. So there's some there's some kind of space, which I, I don't know if that's one of these uh, patios or what that is. And then you have a, almost a vertical wall. Which I'm assuming it's a retaining wall. <laughs> I, I was able to grade it. Back. You got to retain that soil somehow, <laughs> right? Okay. There will be a there may be a retaining wall as some portions along that, but at that point, I was able to grade down from the existing slope and in front of their ex, um, existing evergreen trees down to the patio, leave a ditch, and come up to their patios behind the building with a three to one slope. And like I said, this is rough grading. It's like, I do not anticipate a large retaining wall for this. You also might want to point out that it's a vertical and horizontal exaggeration, right? It it's is two a, to one vertical yeah. to horizontal. What is that? It's not to, yeah. Exaggerated. Sure it's very exaggerated. Okay. It's not the actual scale. Yeah, so that, that's that's a bit confusing, mm -hmm. uh, particularly when you have a scale of the building to the, because the verticals of the that building and that and that painting wall, um, you know that that's the same scale. Do you know what kind of trees you have planted there? What kind of vegetation is there? Uh, the ex existing vegetation in the 20 foot buffer is a mixture of pines and deciduous trees, some junipers. Um, the two, the plant double staggered row of evergreen trees are Leland cypress that are there in front of the 20 foot buffer. I was just a little concerned there that as you cut into that slope, you could damage the roots of the um, of the trees there. And since those trees are going to be above your building. Um, the health of those trees is going to be important because then they they could fall right on top of your well, building they put there. We will definitely deal with that at the at the ever the site plant stage. It's like the evergreen trees that are there now; they're approximately six to eight feet tall. They are not full grown trees okay. yet. I jumped ahead of Mr. Bivens, so oh, please go, go I, ahead. I, I think, go no, no, no. I was going to say it's, it's go ahead. Go ahead. Cause... I'm done. So, Mr. Bivens. So, so um, thank you for for the for the brief presentation. Thank you. Um, so there's a wooden fence. There's like a wooden security fence that sort of runs along the property line. Mm -hmm. Whose fence is that? It. I think it belongs to Avenity Estates. So they have two. So they have the fence that's close to, I guess, your your property, close to the property line, and then they've got a section of trees or 
I guess, guess I guess the, the trees are actually on our property. The trees property. are on your property. Okay. The trees are on our property. Because I went to the site, I went to both sides yesterday and to sort of just see what it looked like. And I was hard pressed to see that unless you're, unless you're on the second floor of one of the homes, one of the four homes that's there, no one can see over the fence. And therefore no one from there is from the infinity side and, and people would be hard pressed. Yeah. They'd yeah, be hard uh, pressed. One of the residents shared this photo with us at uh -huh. a community meeting from their their patio. From their like, pat so oh, from their second floor because they're not doing it from the from ground the second floor. floor. First floor. Yeah. On the patio. The at the... <laughs> okay, so if, so what you're explaining to to the commission is that the the new building would be lower in height than the building that the the main building which is there. And would yes. not would it come up to the half? Uh, the, the clearest. I guess the main. It's like what we were going for. It was like there's the main. There's the main roof line of the main. I guess like the center portion of the building that uh -huh. we were trying to to match into. It's like that was be the maximum height of oh. where our main roof would be, okay. and that's the the center portions in between the peaks. And so. When you go down, so you're going to be 10 feet from the boundary of of the trees that are there. Mm -hmm. And coming back to, to our colleague, and I, also I guess to my colleague to my right, is being able to to ensure, because it's a lovely site. And I drove out there the other day, and it's, you know, it's that neoclassic stuff, but and people know where I sit with that. So I'll just, I'll, 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 be, I'll be restrained in my comments about that. Um, given that the founder of the University of Virginia would anticipate an, an evolution from the neoclassic. And so I will just stop there. But in any event, it's it's really well, it's a really well constructed building. And so I can't imagine that anything you put in is going to be less than what's already there. Right. So I assume you're going to continue the transition. And so my concern was sort of ha not, not so much that that the people behind them would not be able to see the mountain, because I think they will. But my concern is how are you going to bring come from the from the from the back of the the parking lot and connect to that so that it doesn't connect to the new building, create a way to get into the new building so that it doesn't look um, so, so that the, the back of the building doesn't decay. The back of the building isn't subject to, I think, what Commissioner Murray was talking about, to that part of the land sort of crumbling under its under after it's been disturbed. There is 30 feet between the back of the building we are setting. That's how much? 30 feet. Because like the 50 foot setback, there's an, an existing 20 foot buffer. The 30 feet we are having our tie slope, the ditch, and the patios. Thank you. I had another question, and it's not about the grade. <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually wanted to hear more about why you wanted to have this new building. I mean, I read your application. It's obviously twice the size. You said stuff about memorabilia and classes, but could you say more about, you obviously originally thought that the the half size structure would would do the job. Now you want double the size. So what, what I guess what's happened in the organization's planning or the if, demand or If what? you look at the square footage of the proposed, I guess like the original building in the middle of the site, it was 8,000 square feet plus, plus or minus, or actually it was plus, 8,000 square feet plus. So it was actually going to be a two-story building. Okay. So you're you're just going wider? Yes. We're flattening it out. All right. And and again, I'm still I'm still trying to understand why. Can you just, uh, you, you, you've come to us to, to change your already approved plan, and I'm still struggling with why. I guess it was to add more of a... Uh, a formal space between the two buildings to to kind of like bring it into compliance with the with the neoclassical Jefferson Jeffersonian style that's already on the lawn. It's like Kappa Sigma was founded here at UVA, so I mean it is it is tied to the Jeffersonian history. So it's more of an architectural style that you're trying to achieve rather than necessarily additional space it, programming space. It's this. It's it's the same amount of space in the building that was there and the building that's prepared. okay. I'm sorry, I misunderstood st what staff said. Maybe they were referring to the footprint rather. Than... I think it was the footprint. Okay, yeah. so the footprint is twice. As, okay, Tw yeah, I got it. All right, thank you. That half. 
or a little more than half. Okay, good to go. Commissioner Moore. Okay, Commissioner Moore. Good. You guys are good. Okay, I just had a couple of quick questions. One, um, some were answered. One, it said mentions grass pave, and I know that's a remaining um, the carryover. It says all grass park. All grass parking areas must be grass paved unless a product deemed equivalent, et cetera, et cetera. Can you point out where the grass pay would be? Yeah, actually, we are uh, proposing that the fire entry, or I guess like the part of the fire access be in front of the building, and that would be grass paved. Got it. To provide access from the front yes. and okay. access I from the rear. Like it. stabilized turf. Stabilized okay. turf, yes. And you mentioned the grading. Um, Stormwater, are you making any amendments or changes to your stormwater plan? Uh, the stormwater it's management really plan is being, it'll be up, it is being updated with the building wing addition. We are going to take into account the proposed information that we have here, the proposed wing, and like update the pond if necessary to be compliant with what it is now. The existing pond. Yeah. Got it. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, appreciate it. Thanks for your help. All right, I'll open it up to comments from the public. And I have one person signed up and one person online on Zoom. Uh, Sarah Hayden, if you'd come up, please. And you'll have three minutes total time. Actually, can look just like I'm on, too. That's fine. Come up, if you would, and identify yourself, please. And you'll have three minutes of time. And when the light turns yellow, you'll have one minute mm -hmm. left. Thank you. It's expensive to pay. Okay, well, my name is Sammy Barnes. I live at 3421 uh, Montague, which is the one right in the very center of where the new building is proposed. I'm the one that took the picture. And the reason that you can see over the fence as well as you can is because the fence is actually on the down slope already. And so even though it's an eight foot fence, we can see over that fence. And we invested in this house as our ultimate last house that hopefully we'll have to move into. And the the views of Carter Mountain were very important to us. Uh, what I wanted to address um, were two things in relation to what you were describing before. If you could put that picture of the side, side view. Um, and uh, another neighbor that's traveling and couldn't be here had the same question. Uh, we're concerned about the feasibility of actually doing the excavation successfully. We're wondering if uh, any um, soil uh, tests or boring tests have been done just to verify that that is all feasible because we're very excited that now that they've come back with this plan to lower the ground floor to 527 feet, <clears throat> that it can in fact stay there, that there won't be something that comes back later and says, well, there's too much rock. We're going to have to raise the building, and then it's going to be a real problem for us. And then the second question related to that is, as you mentioned before, the uh, retaining wall. We are concerned about not only our, our trees, but also our foundations as wanting to ensure that there, that amount of excavation wouldn't be a cause of concern in the future for our foundations. Great, thank you. And now I think we have Sarah Hayden. Great. Hi, I'm Sarah Hayden, um, and um, I wanted to thank you for taking my comments. I also live on Montague Street, directly behind where the loading area is going to be. Um, like Sammy and our other neighbors, I greatly appreciate the changes that Kappa Sig has come up with um, to make this better for, for those of us who live in, in Avenity. I think you've kind of addressed the issue with the noise, but noise does, consider, does continue to be a concern. And while uh, it's nice to know that we can call the cops, um, we'd rather have better, better relationships with our neighbors than calling the cops on them. And so one of the things, uh, that I'm wondering, I don't expect an answer, is whether or not the, the fraternity headquarters can uh, consider uh, lessening the decibel level of the noise. Um, last, last year's party, I was driven out of my house 
Um, and also to reconsider the time that uh, the music stops. It says between nine and 10. We have a lot of young children in our neighborhood and we also have a lot of medical professionals in our neighborhood who do have to get up and go to work first thing on um, first thing in the morning. Um, then I had a slight concern. Uh, some of us in the neighborhood also had a slight concern whether or not the, um, the meeting space would be rented out to others um, for use uh, because that doesn't seem in keeping with the residential zoning ordinance. And that was it. So thank you for taking my comments. Great, thank you. Is there anyone else present that would like to speak before I go to Zoom? Like everyone else is county staff. So that's. All right, um, Michael, if you could please unmute yourself and state your name and your location. You'll have three minutes and your time starts when you start talking. Hi, Mike Davis. I um, uh, live at 3431 Montague Street. Um, I guess my comment is that this, um, this change is so radically different than what I originally saw when I bought my house in 2020 that I probably would have definitely thought twice about investing, you know, a half million dollars into a place that is going to be, you know, turn into a construction site. I'm very concerned that the plans from this developer are oversimplified and doesn't take into, um, doesn't take into concern, like a lot of the varying uh, landscaping that's there. Um, and that I'm concerned that things will be changed over time that will mitigate the um the views that we have of carter mountain which frankly was the only reason i selected this unit um the trees that are on the drawing that's that's not what they look like um they're not uh they're not as tall as the uh they're not eight foot tall they're they're most of them are sort of uh brush and everything else i'm i'm concerned that the trees that are going to be planted will also interfere with the view of a uh, Carter Mountain. And um, finally, I'm concerned about, as um, as the previous uh, member of the public said, the noise. Um, you don't build something like this and not expect a lot more people to attend. And uh, it's very, very close to those of us who live on Montague. And uh, I'm concerned it's uh, really gonna uh, ruin a lot of the reasons why uh, we bought this place in the first place. My opinion is that this is not a change it is a complete this is not just a uh, an application for a uh, uh, a slight change this is a radical difference that i think a lot of us at montague probably would have thought twice about uh if we'd known that this was what was going to happen that is all i have thank you so anyone else online madam clerk no all right with that, I will open it back up to the applicant. You'll have five minutes if you'd like to respond to any of those questions. Um, I know one of the one of the comments was about whether or not other people would be using the space and be able to rent it. The answer is an, an emphatic no. Uh, the only people that will be using the building are is Kappa Sigma. It will not be rented out. Um, the other question was about the trees that were there. There are, I guess, beyond the existing vegetation, this kind of the natural pine right up against the fence. There is a double staggered row of evergreen trees. Like like you said, they they aren't very tall right now. They're only probably about six to eight feet tall. They are Leland cypress and they will will grow and will remain in place to the best of our extent, <clears throat> or actually they will remain in place after construction. That is like one of the things that uh, we wanna keep. It's like, so if we need to add a retaining wall to save the trees, we will do that. Great, can you speak also to the question of um, the height and the excavation and the risk of rock? Um, have you done we, any? We have not done any soil testing up there or or testing at all to see what the depth of the rock is at that point in time. Chad, do you know anything about that for the existing construction? 
Okay, you have to speak into the mic. And I just identify yourself, please. Thanks. Uh, my name is Chad Gephardt. I'm the executive vice president for Kappa Sigma. Thank you. On that level above the back, there is French drains that have already been built with the first pass that drain down to the pond. So there is uh, ton not tunnels, but tubes under the ground already. So we know it can go down. I don't know how far, but it definitely goes down. So, Got it. Okay, thank you. All right, any other responses from you? No, we're good. Okay, with that, I'll close the public hearing and bring it back to the commission for comment. Commissioner Bivens, would you like to start us off? Um, I think, I think, Chair, that that's, I'm, I'm not sure, but it would be interesting to know whether or not that, that bit of a pavilion that's over on the right-hand side that's next to Galaxy Farm, my, my experience has been that that's where there are outdoor outdoor events. And so it's really the Galaxy, yeah, it's really the Galaxy Farm that's being built out now that would be the closest. And there's even a, a good amount of space over there. Um, mm. yeah, please. Yeah. Um, you know, given that I would challenge the architects to think creatively about what would be the next interpretation of neoclassic architecture. Um, but, you know, that's my own um, brick to hall. Uh, I, I, I'm fine with this and, and support and support it. I think that there will be a site review process, mm -hmm. process where people will be able to talk about that. I, hopefully, um, the executive director will be in, in good contact with the four neighbors that are right behind them to, to be in dialogue and so that there's a direct line, much like we have with the um, homestays that, you know, you have to have a, you have to have, know who the person on call is so that you can call them instead of calling the police. You call the person who's the executive in charge. And I think if, you know, if the executive director of um, Kappa Sigma can be engaged in that dialogue, I, I'm, I'm fine with this and support the, um, support this, this new, this, this revised, um, this revised plan. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Fireha. Um, at this time, I'm not in support of it uh, for a couple of reasons. One is I haven't heard a compelling argument for doubling the amount of impervious surface. Um, I'd rather that they did go taller and not wider. Um, so it's actually a more impactful design that they've come up with in my view, even though they did work hard to lower the elevation. And I'm still, still concerned about the cut and fill plan. I don't have enough detail. I realize this is not a site plan review, um, but I still, I've seen some slopes in our area become very unstable, even with lovely retaining walls. So um, the, I, I am sympathetic also to the neighbors. If they were to purchase a townhome and look at the plan that was approved, they would see that the building that was coming was not um, in their backyard. So because there isn't a compelling reason, I haven't been, it hasn't been shown to me that the building can't be any elsewhere on the site, that it couldn't be in the original location. It's the same size structure. So they're getting the same function out of the building at two stories as they would at one. So it sounded to me that the primary argument was one of a design aesthetic, which to me is not a compelling enough reason to move the use closer to the neighbors and also to double the impervious surface of the site. So that's, um, that's where I am. Since we're in discussion, I'll just sure. uh, ask a question. So if there, um, I my mind went there as well. That's why I asked the question about stormwater management. And they do have a pretty significant stormwater management facility out front that they would use to mitigate the additional impervious surface. Does that not offset it for you? Unfortunately, most of my career has been actually in stormwater management. And we're not really able to design systems that perfectly mimic what was there before. Um, if you look at any developed area, even if it has a stormwater pond with all the calculations and the correct curve numbers, and that we could have a whole long discussion about curve numbers and how they're generated and imperfect, um, that you'll still see impacts to receiving waters. So um, no, if, if, if we were able to 100% offset it just by simply adding more stormwater management, that would be great. But we're not got that good at it, unfortunately. I'm, I yeah understand where you're coming from. I'm yeah. pretty familiar with stormwater management myself. I I guess my question is, does that not actually impact any development in the county? Because in fact, any development doesn't even with mitigation would not meet the hundred percent. That's that's correct. But they already have a plan that's approved to meet their needs for space. 
So I don't, I haven't heard a compelling reason for changing the plan that was already approved besides the design aesthetic of the building would be prettier in the one story spread out format. I'm wondering and that's just function. not enough for me. Yeah. I don't think it functions, but I haven't, again, it's up to the applicant to make that case. And so yeah. um, if they hear from me that I it didn't make it the case for me, they might buck, buck up that argument when they get to the board of supervisors and yeah. come up with a more compelling argument than what I've heard tonight. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Commissioner Carazana. Yeah, I, I have some similar concerns um, in terms of the location of the building. I, I appreciate um, the, that they obviously worked with some of the, the neighbors and 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 listened, uh, dropped the elevations. But there's, so there's a nine foot difference, and I'm there's nothing that I can see here in what's been presented. So it's kind of hard to really understand how this is going to work. That shows me how you mitigate that nine foot. Um, difference between your your entrance to the building, uh, where your 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 slab location and 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 that edge of the uh, planting areas above. Um, so if this moves over to obviously to or the supervisors and the um, and and uh, site plan review, I, I think that's where there's going to have to be a lot of work to figure out how this actually works because there is a risk of that soil not being stable. There's nothing here that shows me how they're stabilizing it. Uh, Glave Home's a good firm. I'm surprised at the materials that we're looking at uh, from a firm like that, to, to be perfectly honest. Thank you. Commissioner Moore? Oh. I just jumped. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's you, sir. Um, I uh, don't have any particular, uh, despite my colleagues bringing some things up, this doesn't, this particular proposal doesn't uh, rub me the wrong way. Um, uh, having uh, additional space for whatever the business is of the, the fraternity to do their thing um, works all right. I do agree with uh, Commissioner Bivens in terms of uh, being mindful and having someone on site to to respond to neighbors when the noise things happen. I was just kind of looking at the agenda for the last Grand Conclave, and uh, you know, seeing like, oh yeah, several nights in a row of, of loud parties could be a real, a real pain in the ears. So, um, but uh, that's for how it's used rather than how it's built. So, um, I'm ready to sort of move forward on that. All right. Yes, I, I guess I would just share as some concerns too about that slope in the back and how that's going to be addressed. Um, potential for collapse. At the very minimum, there I don't know who the civil is here um, that Flave has in terms of a subcontractor, uh, but at the minimum there should there should have been a geotechnical report done if you're going to make a proposal like this. I think it's Radebush. I think the civil is Radebush, but is, sure. is it listed somewhere? Uh, I didn't see it. Yeah, it's like, I said on on yeah, the and the materials. Yeah. But your to your point, I don't know if that was done. I, I haven't seen it. I think said there was no geotechnical. technical. Oh, that's right. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. All right. Commissioner Murray, are you? I didn't want to cut you off. No, are you no, good? That's, that's it. I mean, I think the sound is an issue too, but I don't see what we could do to to affect anything on that, except the suggestions that have already been provided. Okay. Um we'll get to everybody. I'll just share a few things. One is uh and we're still in discussion to yeah. go back and forth. I my my general sense, I thought about the stormwater impacts, I thought about the impervious surface. I, I'm satisfied that the the process that we have for stormwater management is sufficient as you know, the site plan review process and water quality and so on. That's just me. Um the other piece of it is the retaining wall, how that I mean, we're taking the applicant's word at the fact that they graded it so that it would be a three to one slope and that it would have drainage in the back and yes. that there's a French drain in the back or a drain that's been installed. Um, unfortunately, the materials that we have, I know there was probably a logical reason to do it in a vertical to horizontal to exaggeration, but it's just hard to really understand. And I know at the CAC meeting that I was attending, that was one of the areas that we really focused on was something that would show us a, an accurate cross section so we could understand the community's concerns about visibility. And I just don't see it in that section. It just, it doesn't, it doesn't convey that in my mind. 
Um, that said, I think that, you know, when they move forward, assuming they move forward with the site plan and, and the building permit, you know, there are code requirements in place that are going to help to handle the issue of not only setbacks, but stability, um, you know, wall requirements. We're about to talk about that right now at six feet, you know, and engineering requirements, et cetera. So I guess if it were up sort of my, my scales tip towards the side of supporting this understanding that there is, um, there is a, you know, a series of requirements that are in place to, to prevent, I think some of the problems we may foresee. The other thing I just wanted to clarify with staff, and that was the elevation, the 527 foot lower, the ground floor elevation. I know that shows on all our drawings, and I know that the um, recommendation includes a statement that says, the development of the use must be in general accord with the conceptual plan, et cetera. If they were to encounter something that would prevent them from going to 527 feet, they would not be able to build it, right? They would have to come back, or would they be able to adjust that at the site plan? Because a lot of, at least what I'm basing the approval on is the height of that finished floor elevation. Right. So we could probably work with the county attorney to craft some language that is more in line with your concern. Um, if it were to be approved at, as it is, and, it, and that doesn't work out, then they would need to come back and amend the special use permit. So that's not given by the language that's in the staff report already? No, it's not as specific. Got it. That, that's correct. So if so to the extent that the base elevation were a concern, that would need to be added as a condition to the current conditions that are listed, because the current conditions talk about the location of buildings and building heights, yeah. but they don't specify the base elevation on which that building would be constructed. And the, the attached materials are not sufficient to provide that. Well, it's not called out there as, a, as an essential element of the yeah. plan. And yeah. so in order for that base elevation to be an essential element, they would need to be specifically called out in the final conditions. If that was something Thing that the board or the commission were interested in recommending. And I, I should know this, but attachment four, remind me what was attachment four? Attachment four was the conceptual plan. Okay. Yes, the conceptual plan. Okay. So we need something more specific than in general accord with the conceptual plan attachment four. It would need to be called out as an essential element on that on that A, B, C, D list. Got it. Okay. All right. Any further discussion? I just want to reemphasize I am not merely objecting to the building based on stormwater concerns. My primary concern mm -hmm. is the location. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. Is there uh, anybody who would like to make a motion? I move to recommend approval of SP 2023. 18 Kappa Sigma uh, International Headquarters with the conditions stated in the staff report with an addition of, with an elevation of- Base elevation. Base elevation of 527 27 feet. 47 or 27? 27. 527 feet. And to construct the, con and to construct the concept plan to provide pedestrian improvements along Route 20. All right, we have a motion. Do we have a second? A second. Okay, any further discussion? No, all right. Could you Aye. call the roll, please? Mr. Moore? Aye. Mr. Murray? Aye. Ms. Firehawk? No, due to the lack of a compelling argument for the need to relocate the building closer to the neighbors at Divinity and concern with a lack of adequate detail on the potential impacts to the slope. Mr. Missile? Aye. Mr. Carazana? Aye. Mr. Uh, Bivens? Aye. Thank you. Great. Thank you all. I'm some guy. <laughs> Thank you. All right. With that, we will move on to still part of the public hearing, ZTA 2023-8, grading standards and steep slope standards. Where was my I can talk to you differently. Uh, 
Okay. Hello, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my name is Bill Fritz. I work in the Community Development Department, and um, unfortunately, I don't have a PowerPoint presentation for you. This is a lot of word-heavy uh, uh, document. So, I, do you need to go back to your office to get? Yeah, it? Yeah, would, would you like that? <laughs> I'd like to see some 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 retaining walls. So. <laughs> Let me explain what the current ordinance has, and then I can talk to you about what the proposed ordinance is. Under the current ordinance, everywhere in the county, there's a 10-foot maximum retaining wall height. So if you're in the rural areas and you're building a house and you want to put a driveway in or terrace it, 10 feet. If you're in the development areas and you want to build something, 10 feet, unless you are in the steep slopes overlay district which is only within the development areas. In the steep slopes overlay district, the maximum retaining wall height is six feet. So we have situations where you have a property and it has steep slopes, managed steep slopes, because you can't build on preserved steep slopes, but you have managed steep slopes and areas outside of steep slopes. And the areas outside of the steep slopes, you can put in a 10 foot wall and in the steep slopes area, you put in a six foot wall. There's really not an engineering purpose for that. Uh, we had simply picked six feet at the time. Uh, this, the six foot height was first. The 10 foot height came later. The six foot height came from, we pulled it from the air to be per perfectly honest. And what we had was a situation where we, there was a longstanding tradition that the county had, uh, county planners, we deemed any wall six feet or greater to be an objectionable feature that we could require screening on. So we, we picked that height. When the section four, the regulations that apply everywhere in the county came in, 10 feet was picked and that was based on engineering. Um, again, you can still screen it. So, because it's an objectionable feature. What we're looking at doing now, so that's the existing. Does anybody have any questions on the existing regulations before I move on to the proposed? Anybody have questions? Uh, no, but other, other than that was very helpful because it's different than what I had understood. Thank, I just had a clarification, make sure I heard it right. So it was only in the development areas where the six foot versus the 10 foot Correct. Came into play. Correct. You only will have that difference in the development areas because steep slopes exist only within the development areas. When you move into the rural areas, you have critical slopes and you can't build on critical slopes full stop unless you get a special exception. And then if you do get that special exception, you could build a 10 foot wall if the special exception allowed. It. And that, you. now you could. At right right now today that's what you could do so if you're in the yeah. if you're outside the development areas you're on critical slopes you want to put a retaining wall in you need to get a special exception first Got it. to to build anything so that's the starting point the proposed ordinance does not change that so let me just start there that doesn't change that at all what it does is it raises the height of retaining walls on steep slopes to 10 feet. Mm -hmm. So now it's just 10 feet. If if you're allowed to build a wall, the maximum height is 10 feet because you can't build on preserved slopes. You can't build on critical slopes unless you have a special exception. So that, that creates a uniformity in the retaining wall height. It's a little bit easier to administer and design with. The second thing that's being proposed, the current ordinance you're stuck, 10 or six, there's no way to even request an, ex an increase in that height. What we're proposing is that special exceptions be permitted. And these special exceptions really are narrowly crafted to allow special exceptions to facilitate improvements that really require a quarter, mm. roads, trails, paths, things like that. And they need to be something that's um, identified in the comprehensive plan, um, and, and has a public benefit. So these, this isn't a, a subdivision coming in and saying, well, I want a 12 foot wall because it'll, it, it's cheaper for me to build that to, to come into my development. Mm -hmm. Is it shown in the comprehensive plan? If so, maybe yes. If no, no. And this is again, by special exception. So the board of supervisors would be allowed to uh, not only allowed, but would need to look at how does this impact 
other features in the area like, any like pedestrian feel if it's like along a sidewalk or exactly okay. or, or pedestrian feel or what it might look like from adjoining properties the whole idea here is that the retaining walls would increase in the height would only be done if it was really necessary uh, for a public purpose to to allow the facility to operate or if rerouting that road or that trail would require the acquisition of so much land that it just becomes impossible to build. Yeah, yeah. So it's it was narrowly crafted for the special exception. So that's what this does. Mm -hmm. And that's all it does. So it's a pretty narrow, in terms of zoning text amendments, this is a pretty narrow zoning text amendment. That's all I have. That was really helpful. That is Thank helpful. You. Any questions from See the how hard that would have been to put on a Even PowerPoint? Even better than PowerPoint. <laughs> I don't know. I prefer PowerPoint. <laughs> You're still going to Any questions from the commission? I guess I'm still sort of struggling with um, public purpose. Um, you know, I think that's pretty pretty broad in some ways. I mean, I know you say roads, trails, so forth, but you know, so if the if the road to access the subdivision um, required, you know, it was made it easier to access the subdivision if you had a much higher wall, would that be a public purpose, for example? Um, so if you look at the special exceptions. That talks about, is it consistent with the prudent use of public funds? No, because there are no public funds. Oh. Would it require rerouting or redesign uh, of the improvements to an extent that the improvements would not serve the intended purpose? Maybe, mm -hmm. but you need to look at uh, the, the the previous language about it being quarter. Does it significantly increase maintenance cost? And would it result in a design that be unsafe for users and or maintenance of the improvements? So, it, and the Board of Supervisors gets to look at all of these things. So it is designed to be narrowly crafted and give the Board of Supervisors the flexibility to allow improvements to come in. Mm -hmm. Part of the reason it's written the way it is, mm -hmm. also there we, we foresaw the potential where you have a project where they're proffering an improvement. So it's not a public improvement but they're proffering an improvement, which is one the county desires. Mm -hmm. For example, the, the road that connects Fifth Street and, and Avon that Wegmans did doesn't have a 10 foot re retaining wall in the county, it does in the city. But there's an example that, that if that retaining wall had been in the county, what would it have done to that road? Would it yeah. have affected that road, which the county really wanted a connection between mm -hmm. there? So they would have been able to consider this during the uh, during uh, deliberation. I have a question. Um, yes. So one thing that I've seen happen, I'm not saying, I'm not going to say in this county, but uh, in Virginia, or is where, you know, let's say that somebody doesn't, they, they're going to build a structure, but it's floodplain, so they get rid of the floodplain by simply backfilling and then building a high retaining wall. And now they're not in the floodplain. They've wrecked the floodplain, but that's a different problem. So I could, but they might say, but my, my lot isn't buildable unless I elevate mm -hmm. out of the floodplain. Is that, does that then meet this public purpose or like, oh, I can't build it all unless I erase the floodplain with a backfill mm -hmm. behind a, well, It'd be very difficult to make a finding for that under this special exception criteria. Okay. I don't see how you do that, but I also don't see how you get past the special use permit in the floodplain. So yeah. there are two significant hurdles there. And Our county is particularly wonderful. I hold it up as an exemplar for not push, let, allowing development in floodplains where it's not a good place to build. So I love that. And I just wanted to make sure that I, this didn't affect that at all. It, hypothetical, but thinking of the hypotheticals and looking at the language here and being someone who has reviewed special exceptions before, it'd be very difficult for staff to be able to make the necessary findings. Okay. Thank you. Great. Any other questions? I think this is sort of a, a clarification question. I think I know the answer, but basically um, if one was in the rural area and had a critical slope on their property or in the development area and had a preserved slope on their property, you still have to come and get a special 
permission to build a rectangle period in the in the development area you wouldn't even be able you would not even be able to come in you would need to request a rezoning to uh, change that designation from manage to uh, excuse me from to from preserve to manage, manage yeah. or remove it entirely and in the rural areas you need a special exception mm -hmm. and a managed steep slope in the development areas you could build a retaining wall correct sort of by right right today right. yes today yeah okay <laughs> Any other questions? I just had a couple. One is um, I would imagine or I would assume that any code requirements for railings, if there's walkways behind these walls, would remain the same. That's not impacted. Cor correct. None of the other standards for yeah. retaining walls are changed. So we're maintaining, for example, and I know this isn't the question, but I'm going to elaborate on, on the answer. Uh, your uh, your stepping between walls, your your reverse yeah. slope, those all stay in place. Got and it. any wall over two feet requires a, a building permit. So uh, that so during the building permit review would be when you determine whether or not you need railing or other safety measures. It's over two feet. Two feet. I believe it's wow. two feet. Huh. I believe it's two. <laughs> lower than I thought. Yeah, it's okay. it's lower than most people imagine. Yeah. All right. Well, great. Thanks. No other questions for staff. Um, I think I will now open the public hearing and I will ask for the applicant's presentation. We, we are the case, applicant. You are the applicant. <laughs> it's been done. So that's been checked. Um, uh, are there any members of the public who would like to speak to this matter? No. Oh, sorry, not online. All right. And it doesn't look like anybody in the building either. So I will quickly close the public hearing, put it back for discussion. That might have been the fastest process. <laughs> um, it, are, are we going to build a big, beautiful wall? So, so I, maybe I'll start if that's okay. Yeah. Um, so, I'm a little bit concerned, particularly you brought up this street station. When I understand from that comment that the reason that there's that big wall there is because of Charlottesville. Um, I would hate to see that sort of thing happen in Albemarle County. You know, there's definitely a, a situation where you can canyonize your, your growth area, where particularly since we don't protect, provide any protection of intermittent streams in the growth area, what happens is those often get filled, covered with pipes. And, and I think one of the things that's also worth noting is that this distinction between preserved and managed slopes. And when this was first when people first came up with this idea, the idea was that there's these areas that are already impacted or may not be natural. And so we'll have a different standard for them. I, I almost wish I'd come with like a slide presentation about this because I, I almost feel like I need a whiteboard and a marker. But if you have a you have a natural slope like this and you cut out part of that natural slope, and we almost saw an example just, just a moment ago, yeah. you end up with a new steeper slope on one side, and then because the fill is removed here, maybe shifted down here, now you end up with potentially two new managed slopes on either side of that. So the, the question is, is when we're allowing, when we allow the development in these managed slopes, which were probably previously natural slopes, are we making the situation worse or are we making it better? And I think that that's from my concern, the thing that needs to be addressed the most is like, what are we doing to make this better so that we don't end up with something, you know, that's still going to cause erosion that could be present a safety ha hazard or that just canyonizes our, you know, our growth area. Um, you know, and so, so that's, that's one. It, then also just in terms of place, the reason that, um, what provides a sense of place is the fact that we are in the Piedmont, we have rolling hills, we have a topography, you know. Um, if you flatten all that, um, which many sites have done, and, and as you flatten that, you end up with retaining walls on the sides as you flatten that landscape, um, you lose a sense of place. And so I'm concerned about any policy that, that does that, that could potentially incentivize more flattening of, of our landscape. I don't know that this kind of exceeds the discussion of this these retaining walls here, but I think it's still an important thing to, to bring up. Um, and then, then also just, we're discussing um, providing an exception here to allow higher retaining walls, but we still don't have the stream protection ordinance come back before us. Um, 
And, you know, so we're, we're loosening regulations and apparently this, this is something we can have two meetings about, but um, to, to solve a problem, we know that's been a problem since 2014, it's taken 10 years. I'm going to draw your whiteboard piece here. Oh, awesome. <laughs> so chair, if I could just yes. sort of balance that a little bit. So I appreciate what Commissioner Murray is speaking to, particularly about sort of trying to keep the topography of, of the Piedmont on this side of the Blue Ridge. But I also want to sort of couple that with the fact that we're talking about 5%. So 95% of the county's land is still, to the extent that it is, rolling hills and still comes under, while it may not have the storm protection, or some, excuse me, the stream protection that you're speaking to, that is an issue that every time in my period on this on, on, the, on the commission, anytime there's been any serious, any attempt to advance a conversation about stream protection, a, um, a very capable lobbying group comes forth and screams. They scream that they can't be good farmers and 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 be and that being a farmer in this community is is um they are burdened by having to pay attention to, to streams in any kind of significant way. So I'm I agree with you. And I, I think that we there's been some conversation among some of us over the years that we while we understand there's some resistance, but we don't understand why we just didn't adopt the Chesapeake Bay Act, which would then give a a a, a set of 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 um, of ordinances and and rules that would allow us to allow us to sort of perhaps make significant advances advances on on the stream on this on the stream protection. But I want to remind us we're talking about five percent of the land of which our colleagues our our co citoyen uh, I don't know what that is in English. Um, every time we try to do a couple of stories higher. They scream. I didn't say it today because I was trying to be a good guy. But the Avinity people, there was a project that came came in 2017, I believe it was, that wanted to put some a modest scale, a family wanted to put a modest scale development, multifamily development on the property that's right next to Avinity. And they asked permission, could we use your street? as an emergency way to get into this property. And they call bloody hell. And so while it's okay, and everybody knows my deal on preserving, I was kind because I wanted to say to the people, you should buy the property. You don't want your, you don't buy the property. That's how you deal with this. So it is always odd for me to have people calling out a project when they were given an opportunity to put a modest, a modest family-owned multi multi-family thing there, but didn't want to do it because they didn't want to share their rope. And so this is since we're doing something a little different here. Um, I understand what we're saying. If you want to see a, a, a high, high, a high retaining wall, go up Burkmore Drive, right behind um what used to be Price Chevrolet or whatever the thing is. I don't I don't know what it is now, you know, but there's a very high set of uh, retaining walls there. And one of the reasons they were there so they could put some more houses on it, pure and simple. They wanted some more buildable land. And if in the in the 5% of the county, we're trying to create space for people to build more houses, because we need more houses here, I'm told, um, then I'm okay, even though I find that wall scary and would never walk in front of it. <laughs> I would never walk in front of that wall. For the reasons, but it, it is well, it's well constructed and they paid a lot, they paid a lot of attention. So that's what I, that's my main point is that we're talking about 5% of the county that this is going to apply to, and 95% of the county is still going to have that gently undulating um, uh, hills, but we're still not going to do anything about stream, stream, stream protection because there's a very strong lobbying group in our county that refuses to let that go forward. I'll add just a little bit onto that because I was, I was thinking about the same thing. And when I was just mentally diagramming it, it the thing that uh, came to mind is number one, aesthetic impacts to a higher wall. So you're basically going this much higher. You're going four feet higher on one wall. 
Um, your alternative would have been to do six feet and then four feet behind it. Um, you could potentially plant in front of that four foot step, right? But then I also realized that you are getting more development area, which you said in your staff report by increasing the you know height of the wall because you don't have that extra wall to add to it. Um, so I I mean it seems to me that again because of the small amount you know the the low percentage of these that you'll see the only aesthetic piece I mean I and I spoke with somebody about this I think it was you Michael just the impact to the entrance corridor if there are examples where a ten foot wall looks horrendous and you know three I don't know whatever four foot walls or something that would help to mitigate would be better I would think that the ARB will step in and say we think your 10 foot wall looks terrible. We need you to do something to mitigate that, whether it's screening or step backs or something. So we've got that covered from an entrance corridor standpoint, I think. And it's not, it's also not by right. It's, they still have to come in and prove a public purpose and ask for permission and that could be denied, right? To go beyond 10 feet. Right, yeah. right, right. But right. You go 10 feet, they can, they're good. This will allow them to do that. One thing I'd, I'd like to point out also on the entrance corridor, um, one of the factors to be considered when we drew up whether or not a area was preserved or managed mm -hmm. was whether or not it was in an entrance corridor and was important to the entrance corridor. So the areas where the slopes were important to the entrance corridor, yeah. they were placed into preserved slopes and cannot have walls built on them. That's a great anyway, point. I so forgot just to... Yeah, close that circle. Yeah, no, that's really helpful. You know, Chair, at one point, staff had, at one, um, one of our directors had mentioned that they were looking at a project that would look at preserved and look at slopes across the county. Yeah. That there's now new technology that would allow them to do that in a more um, uh, efficient and actual way. And so when we do that new map, I don't know how we get to those maps where you do those overlays, mm -hmm. that if we could sort of be be intentional about using new technology, I think that would help a bunch of us mm. or whoever the us is when we're finished here so that we know what our steep, what our, what our steep slope overlay is in, 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 in today's terms. Well, because I, I, I was thinking about what Commissioner Murray said. So if I'm looking at the Berkmore Drive thing, so some of that was created when they did that road. Yeah. When when they did the road, they created the slopes because they just took the dirt and moved it over there without any without any appreciation that the people up there on I think it's Woodlands Road or something like that, whatever that road where the SPC used to be, the people were going to perhaps try and create some because it's in the development area. They were going to create housing over there. So this whole this whole un the the sort of unintentional impacts of construction. Yeah. Of which, in that case, it was VDOT, and I don't know how we tell VDOT. Don't. Yeah, see, I, and I, <laughs> you know, I don't know how we do that. <laughs> but I mean, that has that has impacts too. You know, on, you know, we end up putting a lot of the trails through these, through these riparian areas, and when you end up with retaining walls like squishing into the <laughs> riparian areas, then. It, it really makes those those remaining those trails inhospitable. Yeah. And so, you know, and and I appreciate your comment about, you know, the five percent. And yeah, and I, I agree we want to maximize development in the growth area. But it's also important for that to be livable. Um, and I think that if we there's an extreme that we could go to with mm -hmm. high retaining walls and flattening the landscape that would make the growth area unlivable. Um and and I would hate to see us go there. All right, any other comments or questions? Okay, um, do we have a motion to approve? So moved. The TA 2023-8. We have a yes, motion to so approve, do I have a second? Second. So so just to clarify, that'd yeah. be a motion to recommend approval to the Thank board of supervisors, <laughs> correct? <laughs> Commissioner Moore, that's your motion. Yeah, I'll, uh, I recommend approve. I, I move to recommend approval of ZTA twenty twenty three bunch of zeros eight. All right, and we had. Do we have a second? Did somebody you second, second it? You second it. That actual thing. Any discussion? All right. Can we call the roll, please? Yes, Mr. Bivens. Aye. Miss Firehawk. Aye. Mr. Carizana. Aye. Mr. Missile. Aye. Mr. Murray. No. 
Mr. Moore. Aye. Great. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, staff. Mr. Fritz, appreciate it. Thank you. All right, we'll move on to committee reports. Are there any updates from the commissioners on committees? You want to go first? Yeah, you can go first. All right. Uh, the MPO CTAC, the Metropolitan Planning Organization Citizens Transportation Advisory Committee, had a special April meeting. Uh, it was I was five minutes late, which was twenty five percent of the meeting. Uh, it was very short. Huh. Um, basically, <laughs> we got uh, a very quick um, overview of the moving toward twenty fifty uh, transportation plan. Uh, it's just published. It's available if you want to see it. Wow! Awesome. That's a great report. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, so we had the um, Crozet CAC um, at this time at Brownsville, um, and it was a little bit of a larger event, more outreach. Um, a bunch of different topics were, were discussed, ranging from um, an update on core systems modernization with the county. Um, there's a lot of discussion, as, as one would expect in Crozet, about Eastern Avenue. Um, and um, there's one of the things that was discussed too was uh, my staff was ways to move forward on Eastern Avenue, one of which was the idea of um, a public private partnership on that. So I'll be excited to hear when we hear some more details about that. I think there's a lot of eagerness among the public to hear some hear you know, okay. Um, there's also discussion about um, in Crozet Square, you know, if you go to Crozet and the Mud House there, they're, you know, they're going to change that. So now right now there's a stoplight and you can go right or left. Um, now it's right in, now they're going to change that to be right in, right out. So you can no longer make a left turn there. To me, that makes a lot of, that, <laughs> to me, that makes a lot of sense. You're going to have to go around to the library, basically, if you're going to go left there. Are they going to fix that road? Dan? Are they going to fix the road? That's yes. Okay, because that's yes. They're going to fix that. The idea is they're going to fix that whole plaza. Okay, because that's a rough road to have to. Yeah, it, it to There's a whole ground. there's a whole project um, that they're doing there. Um, you know, this was related more to school board, but there's a lot of concerns about the teachers and you know teachers getting laid off and inadequate pay. Um. There was um, there's discussion just about the general infrastructure infrastructure gap within Crozet. Um, um, discuss sidewalks. Um, and um, oh, and I did um, one of the things that was mentioned, and this was news to me. They um, someone someone talked about sidewalk priorities, and apparently there is a um, county website. I didn't realize where you can actually go in and you can see. Um, priorities for transportation improvements and, and including things like sidewalks. So, did you ask them to um, name themselves if they're going to continue out to send out um, inflammatory postcards? I did not mention the inflammatory postcards. Um, it it is it is one thing of, of note too. I'll mention is that one communication I got from. Um, a member of Crozet has sent me a a recording um, from back when Dennis Rooker and Sally Thomas were were in Crozet, and it was talking about um, West Hall, and it was a very talking interesting. What? what? Sorry, talking about what? West Hall, and so Absolutely. yeah, and so it, there's a is a very interesting discussion. I'll be glad to send it to any of you who, who want to listen to it. Um, it's interesting how much the issues have stayed the same and the the debate about um, the lack in infrastructure and the, you know, the challenges of by right development and so forth. But it, it's very, it's interesting. We're still battling with a lot of the same issues that we were back then. Thank you. Any other reports? <laughs> it's not really a report because I think Commissioner Moore already got it, but MPO tech also met but it seems like no, they have the same, same they have the same agenda so uh, yes it's the yeah. we, it's online the report i think we don't get a lot of citizen contribution per se to our mpo meetings but i've never yeah i've never had any any that i remember right. 
it's open to the public, but absolutely I, to the public. Every once in a while, you may get somebody. <laughs> Commissioner Farrar. Yes, I attended the fifth and Avon CIC meeting. The primary agenda item was uh, a request uh, by Tandem School to increase enrollment, and I just wanted to get the numbers correct. So the campus is about. 24 and a half acres, and they want to increase enrollment from 250 to 400 students. Mm. They said that right now they don't have any plans to dramatically increase enrollment in the near term. They have maybe about 25 additional students they'd like to be able to let in. But over time, they do see the need to um, grow the, the size of the school. Um, we didn't get into a lot of detail about, they didn't have a detail about how additional buildings they might need on the site. I don't think they've gotten that far along in their thinking. The only concerns that were raised in the meeting were uh, just considerations about traffic impacts, if they did get to that number and how that school letting out might affect a nearby school also getting out at the same time. And Tandem talked about the fact they've tried to do staggered um and arrival and departure times already, they've been doing that to accommodate the traffic conflicts. I'm not aware that there's a huge conflict going on right now, though. But anyway, it, there was not really um, much concern about it overall in the meeting. In other words, people were not alarmed at that. Um, and they took all that under advisement, and they'll be to the Planning Commission at some point with an application. If I could just add to that, I was looking at their um, application, and they have had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight special use permit applications over the years. And they did say in there that the one, which is SP 2015, 21, it's an addition of a middle school. And they would, they haven't built that yet, right. but they would build that to accommodate the additional students. Yeah, at some they point it. they have to build more buildings, but it that we weren't presented with any kind of site plan or sketch or anything to understand. But that has been approved. Yeah. So they actually have a special use permit okay. to expand the buildings that was approved in 2015. 2015. Yeah. They just haven't so it was that. really just about the enrollment. And I tried to look it up on my tablet to be more informed, but my tablet does not want to talk to the county government this evening for some reason. So I can only look at my cell phone and the site plan is one inch big and I can't expand it. So that's all I got. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Bivens, nothing. All right. What else do we have? Uh, let's see, review of the Board of Supervisors meeting, Mr. Barnes. Thank you, sir. Um, so the board met on April 17th, uh, talked about uh, numerous, there was a bunch of homestay issues on, on that particular board meeting. Uh, the two public hearings, besides, well, there was one on the, uh, the budget, but uh, the ones that were more land use related was Cornerstone Church, that's on Route 20 North and Pantops. Came in, um, it was rezoning to C1 for the church with some proper uses out. Mm -hmm. um, that was passed. And then the other one that they considered was the Woodbrook Apartments, the one with 244 units that was um, between Burkmar and, and Woodburn, um, up near Agner Hurt. Yeah, yeah that, that gotcha. one also was passed by the board. Got it. That was Those the one were the two major connection. items I think were on there. Yeah. Connecting. Great. Right. That's the one the connection between the call to stack. Yeah. There. Yep. Thank you. And how about segue into AC44 updates? So um it's been interesting with AC44. Uh we've spent a lot of time working on the goals and objectives. And you all have spent a fair amount of time with that. And our plan is to bring you back the action steps um shortly. Um some of the senior management in the, the county were looking at what we've been doing. And I think um, wanting to make sure that we were taking a sort of a holistic or contextual component to the to the work that we have been doing. Obviously, um, what we had brought to you before was eight chapters, each one with its own goals and objectives. And um, I think there was a, a desire for us to, to go back and sort of like create like a sort of a section in front of that sort of contextualized mm -hmm some of that work to allow the reader to have a broader view of kind of what the county's policies were, what our objectives were, and how we were going to try and meet those. So staff has sort of stepped back for a minute, and um, we're working on something. I would love to be able to tell you what the schedule is, especially after I 
gave you the doom and gloom yeah, for our our several vacation. meetings in a row about <laughs> you're going to be here all summer. Um, I don't know exactly how this will play out from a schedule standpoint. I would like to be able to bring something back to you at the next meeting, um, hopefully, or it may be the week meeting after that. We're, we're still trying to make this the AC44 plan and not the AC46 plan. Um, but as we go back, I think I think it's a really good opportunity for this thing to be um, an improved document. I think some of the, the dialogue we've been having, I think, will um, improve where we're headed and we'll build still on the work that we've done to, to date. Mm -hmm. So that is a bit of a bob and a weave. Got it. Semper Gumby. All right. Semper Thank Gumby. you. Thanks. Uh, any new business? I was just going to ask about the schedule in the summer, but now I can't. <laughs> any old business? Don't want to you still, just for the commission chair, and you still want us to tell the two of you when we're not going to be here? Yes. Right. Okay, please. You still want us to do that? <laughs> yes, for sure. <laughs> uh, and any items for follow-up? All right. Just, just have we have we heard anything about when the water protection ordinance will be coming back? Sorry, the riparian buffer overlay district will be coming back before the commission. Uh, yeah, I've asked about that. Um, had some staff turnover, and uh, does not look like it'll be coming back to you anytime in the near term. We lost um, one of the gentlemen who was working with Ag Forestry District. Uh, in our office, they moved on from the job. And so Scott's working on trying to make sure the Ag Forestry District stuff gets uh, dealt with this year. All right. Thank you. With that, I'll adjourn the Planning Commission meeting until Tuesday, May 14th, 2024. Assume mm -hmm. it's at 6 p.m. and we do not have a work session. At least that's what the agenda says so far. Mm -hmm. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Thanks Chair.